The Joker is such an iconic character that two different actors have won an Oscar for playing him. His first live action appearance was in the iconic Adam West led Batman series from way back in 66. Cesar Romero played the Joker on the show, famously refusing to shave off his mustache, which can be seen under his white face makeup. This Joker, inspired by the 1960s comics, is more of a prankster, using gimmicky weapons and old school humor, rather than being genuinely homicidal, though he does attempt to kill Batman and Robin occasionally during the show. The classic comic book style is in full flow, with bright green hair, white makeup, red lipstick and a wild grin, a green shirt with a black lapel, and a striking purple velvet suit. Oh, how delicious! <laughs> Romero returned for Batman's big screen debut in the same year for Batman the Movie. This time, he joins forces with Riddler, Catwoman, and the Penguin as part of the United Underworld creating a formidable alliance for Batman to foil. In a standout moment, we see him riding a flying umbrella. Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman film is definitely one of the most iconic movie villains of all time. The character, originally named Jack Napier, becomes the Joker after a confrontation with Batman leads him to falling into a vat of chemicals, disfiguring him and driving him insane. This version, unlike the previous one, is a sadistic madman with a warped sense of humor. His crimes are fueled by a twisted artistic vision, and he revels in chaos and unpredictability. Taking over the Gotham City underworld, the Joker embarks on a deadly crime wave, aiming to overshadow Batman with his murders using a lethal toxin called Smilex. The story reveals a personal connection between Batman and the Joker, tracing back to the Joker being the mugger who killed Bruce's parents. The climax sees the Joker attempting to escape Batman, only to fall to his death after Batman ensnares him with a grappling hook. His face is deformed, unlike Romero's version, but the red lipstick and white face remain, as does the purple velvet suit, but this time it comes with a purple velvet hat to match. An orange shirt with a teal lapel and waistcoat completes the updated look. You can call me Joker. In 2000, a series of six on-star TV commercials centered around Batman aired, and one of those featured the Joker, played by Curtis Armstrong. This look is closer to the comic book than anything before. Prosthetics give his face more pointed, creepy features, and his hair is acid green with a classic purple suit. We see Joker driving in this appearance. In a 2002 episode of Birds of Prey, the Joker pops up for a brief appearance. Roger Stoneburner plays him on screen while Mark Hamill provides the voice. The Joker shows up outside Barbara Gordon's apartment and shoots her as she opens the door, delivering the horrifying line, Knock, knock. Who's there? Batgirl. Past tense. <laughs> the appearance is clearly based on Batman the Animated Series. Bud Watson appeared as Cesar Romero and the Joker in the 2003 biographical comedy TV special Return to the Batcave, The Misadventures of Adam and Burt. We see a joke about Romero refusing to shave his mustache before it's covered by his makeup. What are you going to do about the mustache? I told the producers, I had just my entire career and I'm not shaving it. You think the makeup will cover it? Mm -mm. Perhaps the most chilling performance by a villain in any movie is Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight from 2008. Made more poignant due to the tragic death of Ledger before the release of the film, ensuring he won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for the role. In the film, the Joker dons his iconic color scheme, but he has a less made-up appearance. His hair is long and greasy, and he just looks unhinged all topped off by smeared clown makeup over facial scars from his Glasgow smile. This version of Joker is a sadistic nihilist driven by a desire to expose the inherent chaos and absurdity of existence. His violent acts and twisted humor aim to break societal norms and prove that deep down, everyone is capable of descending into savagery. Tasked by Gotham's mob leaders to eliminate Batman, the Joker vows to kill daily until Batman reveals his identity and surrenders. His campaign of terror results in multiple deaths, including that of Bruce Wayne's love, Rachel Dawes, and leaves District Attorney Harvey Dent disfigured, turning him into Two-Face. Despite Batman's eventual victory over him, 
the Joker claims to have triumphed in corrupting Gotham's soul through Dent's downfall, hinting at an eternal conflict with Batman as he is sent to Arkham Asylum. All it takes is a little push. <laughs> in the first season of Gotham, Cameron Monaghan, channeling the manic energy of Mark Hamill's iconic Joker voice, portrays Jerome Valeska, the disturbed son of a circus performer and a clear precursor to the Joker. Jerome dies in the second season, sparking a wave of imitators and setting the stage for a legacy of death and madness. Monaghan later returns as both Jerome and his twin brother Jeremiah, who embodies aspects of the Joker's persona that Jerome didn't. Jerome is chaotic, impulsive, and very much an anarchist, making him unpredictable, loud, and destructive, enjoying making his acts a spectacle. On the other hand, Jeremiah is more calculated, a criminal genius planning things out, manipulating and asserting a level of control that makes his character unsettling. Jerome appears dressed like a classic mobster in a gray suit and still has natural red hair. Before Jerome's resurrection, his face is removed by a devoted follower, leading to him stapling it back on and gaining his disfigured appearance. Jeremiah embraces the Joker persona much more literally, choosing a flamboyant sparkly blue coat with a burgundy shirt and tie, dyeing his hair green, applying red lipstick and white makeup. That is, until he ends up falling into acid, leaving him heavily transformed into a literal monster, now wearing a long coat and thick mustard yellow gloves. Today's the big day. Jared Leto's performance as Joker in 2016's Suicide Squad is one of the more divisive. This was far removed from Heath Ledger's portrayal, and intentionally so. It is much closer to the classic comic book version, but with a realistic modern twist, giving him tattoos like a stereotypical criminal, including some on his face and one with a smiling face on his left hand. He also has metal teeth. The acid green hair is a constant, but he appears in different outfits in different scenes, including a sparkly jacket and black shirt with no tie. The acid scene shows us just how messed up the Joker is. He watches Harley jump into the vat of chemicals, ready to leave her for dead. Then changing his mind, he dives in after her, and they emerge from the chemicals, kissing and laughing manically. <laughs> Joker also makes a cameo appearance in Powerless. This is in a newsreel segment reporting that the Joker has been arrested in Gotham City. The Arkhamverse version of Joker made a brief appearance in Ready Player One. It's not a live action version, but the movie is technically live action, just with a lot of animated parts. In the Titan series, the Joker appears briefly in several cameos. He is depicted as a villain killed by Batman in a dark future envisioned by Trigon for Dick Grayson. Later in the show, he murders Jason Todd before being captured by the GCPD. In Joker, Joaquin Phoenix portrays Arthur Fleck, a troubled party clown and aspiring comedian plagued by mental illness causing him to laugh pathologically. After a series of setbacks, including losing his job and facing neglect from society, Arthur's descent into madness ends in violent acts, including murdering his mother and a former colleague. His appearance on a talk show ends in tragedy when he kills the host sparking citywide unrest. Despite his arrest, Arthur becomes a symbol of rebellion and indirectly influences the creation of Batman as he inspires the killing of Bruce Wayne's parents. The look is undeniably the Joker, but it's a completely fresh take. The clown makeup is more traditional, and the suit is there but it's bright red with an orange waistcoat and green shirt as the movie explores the early stages of the character becoming the Joker. Phoenix's performance earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor, the second actor to receive an Oscar for playing the Joker after Heath Ledger. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's the police, ma'am. Your son's been hit by a drunk driver. He's dead. Jared Leto's version of Joker also has a cameo in the Snyder Cut of Justice League, showing up in a vision of an apocalyptic future where he appears to Batman, dressed in a full SWAT uniform to show him what will happen if he doesn't act to stop Darkseid's invasion. Why you sent a boy wonder? To do a man's job. In a blink and you'll miss it cameo, the Joker, clearly inspired by Jack Nicholson's iconic portrayal, makes a brief appearance in Space Jam A New Legacy. In the third season of Batwoman, we get a new take on the Joker. In this Arrowverse show, we find out that the original Joker has been killed. That's when Marquise Jett, a young black man with a past encounter with the Joker, decides to take up his mantle and become a new Joker 
planning to crash a blimp full of laughing gas on Gotham, but in the end, he fails. This is the first black Joker, and there isn't a huge similarity to the classic look, only the dyed hair, which is purple. We also see the original Joker in a flashback scene, hijacking a school bus and zapping Marquise Jet's head with his electric joy buzzer, causing serious brain damage. None of you matter anymore. Barry Cogan portrays the Joker in The Batman, making a cameo where he forms a connection with Riddler across cells at Arkham State Hospital. Then, in a deleted scene, Batman reluctantly consults the Joker to profile Riddler after his initial murders. This interpretation of the character glimpsed in blurry or extreme close-up shots features a perpetual smile due to an unspecified biological condition. His physical appearance includes peeling skin and a scalp burned with patches of hair. <laughs> the first trailer for Joker Folia Do reveals that the sequel to 2019's Joker is going to be a departure from the first movie. This is a musical-based feature that charts Joker whilst he's incarcerated in Arkham Asylum, meeting Harley Quinn, who looks like a fellow patient, rather than a therapist as she traditionally is, falling in love and escaping to continue growing into the role of a true villain. Although, it could easily be that Harley is his therapist, and all of this is just inside his head. The look is consistent with the first movie, with Joaquin Phoenix reprising his perfect portrayal of Arthur Fleck with a love for colorful suits and clown makeup, but also casting a dark and moody image when shown in his overalls while locked away. This could easily get Phoenix more awards for playing the Joker. It looks incredible.